I'm Joni Polina with Mind Body Spirit Integration, and I am a member of the St. Croix River Valley Holistic Practitioners. We're here today, and you're watching For Your Health. I am talking with Anita White today. She is a life coach with White Lighter Coaching Quest. She has an office in Stillwater, and she also meets clients in their home or their workplace or wherever feels most comfortable for them. It's Anita's mission to be a resource for healing, inspiration, and wisdom. And she believes that through positive thoughts and actions, we find love from within, and we restore harmony in our being. So welcome, Anita. Thank you, Joni. It's so good to have you here. It's really good to be here today. Good, Thank good, you. good. So I know that you have another um, video that we've done already about um, meditation, but I think we're mm -hmm. gonna take a little different avenue Mm -hmm. this time mm -hmm. um, and I probably need to have you start out with telling us a little bit about what a life coach is first and then we'll move to the meditation. Okay, um, life coaching comes in a lot of varieties. There are coaches that will coach in business and coaches that will be coach on um, family systems, people that will coach you on how to exercise how to um, get your life in order and other other different ways. And my, my take on coaching is that wherever you are, I'm going to meet you there and help you facilitate learning for yourself and help you find your resources, whether they be internal or external, and develop a plan on how you can create what you want in your life. And there's in coaching, there's always a therapeutic process where there's some things that might come up from the past and you stop and start and stop and start with reliving some of that changing it and and moving forward and each time we look at it we get better and better and better and heal a little more and so my my coaching techniques that people say well what kind of coaching do you do well it's developing a way first to understand what's going on and how it's going on and to, to really help people with direction, you know, maybe give them an assignment or two and how to change their thinking. And linguistically, we give ourselves messages all the time, our voice is chattering all the time. And then how we say things out into the world is kind of projecting who we are and how we're gonna be. So if that negativity is out there, like, can't do that, I don't wanna be, you know, I've never been able to, or this is always gonna happen. You know, that kind of language, we kind of change and, and, you know, work through that so you start hearing yourself more. So my focus is more about how language can help you change and grow your life. And I have, you know, three corners, what I call three corners to my practices. One is that first we have to kind of, you know, deal with our bodies, what's going on there. If there's problems, physical problems, emotional problems, let's deal with that and get that kind of on the way, on the way so, or out of the way if there are blocks. And then there's the emotional stuff and how do we manage those and how do we get through those and how we can get more control over those. And that mean control everybody else but be able to not be handicapped by what we're feeling, by being able to put little strategies in the place of those things that inhibit us. And then there's spiritual guidance. And I don't, I don't, I don't center on any type of religion. I meet you where you are in whatever religion you are and help you grow your faith from what your perspective is. And, and so I, my coaching is developed over a certain period of time to not really be segregated into when I have people that I'm coaching in business, I have people that I'm coaching that are teenagers, I have young women and 40-year-old, um, 50-year-old men, 60-year-old men that I'm coaching. And it's really that they're ready to change everything in order to be happier and healthier. Okay. And so that's, that's my focus. I've got 600 hours of corporate coaching and a psychology degree and have been out in the business for 20 years helping people heal. So I really know prospectively where to meet them and not to push too hard and really pace people and how to help them grow. Okay. So that's how you came to this is through a psychology degree? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Tell us about that. Actually, I think that I came through this from having a lot of trauma, oh, you know, through okay. growing up, um, having violence, you know, experience, experiencing one form of violence or another until I was 23. I was really in, in a state of 
fear and hypervigilance and fight or flight mode all the time trying to protect myself. Mm -hmm. So my therapeutic process included, you know, going through different management states just like I was talking about. Okay. You know, where I had someone else helping me and showing me how to change my thinking and how to change my behavior and really focus on positive things. Okay. And that inspired me to go and get a psychology degree. And in that psychology process, there was, of, of course, internships and things like that where I, I grew into being more than, than just wanting a psychology degree, where I've worked with um, in facilitation with support groups and education with people that have been traumatized by addictions, that have um, teenagers that have been, had problems, Okay. chemically abused um, par parents that have chemical abuse issues, their children, okay. and then of course people that are in the recovery process of one form or another, um, sexual abuse, rape, um, there's folks that are single or, or divorced that need to have some kind of way of looking at themselves differently. You know, so I facilitated support groups there, and I have lots of certifications. I won't go into all the details okay. of what those are, but even even you know, grief groups, grief education and support groups, those facilitators need someone to like vent their what they've heard, sure. even in their groups. And I've, you know, ha that has helped me in a big way okay. to be able to really meet people where they are and help them facilitate their learning and their feelings and their healing. Okay, good, all right. Brought it full circle there. Yes, I Very did, I good. did. Okay, <clears throat> so we're moving on um, today to a little different talking uh, topic about meditation, but it has a little more to do with nature, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you want to give us a little bit more of, about that piece? I don't know if it's um, examples of it maybe at this point. How, how do we use nature for meditation? Mm -hmm. Well, I, one of the things I like to do is listen to people on how they receive love, how they receive contentment, and how they receive joy. Receiving is not something we do a lot in this culture. No, we don't. And, and especially in the Midwest, we're like, give our shirt off our back before we are warm ourselves. And to be able to find a place anywhere, anytime, that can give us a sense of peace and belonging is right out there in front of us. And water has its own cleansing, clearing, it helps with your perspective on things. I spend time walking by the, the river, the St. Croix River. I, I've lived probably, moved a whole many, lot of times, and every time I've been near water, so I could go there. And then I realize that that gives me a sense of peace. It's like, sure. it, it's not even a conscious thing that I visualize, but I could, that all my worries and troubles are just going washed away off into the vast ocean, and I don't need them anymore because they don't serve me. So, and, and waterfalls, people have the little fountains in their homes, so they get the, the auditory and the visual where they're hearing it and seeing it. It's something that's, you know, very solid, but it, it automatically will bring us to a different state, yes. a different feeling. And while we're thinking that, it might be that we're just um, not thinking that. Got it. So it removes our sure. process and our thinking. So, um, and then there's air, I'm let, wind, mm -hmm. and how many people love to sit through a thunderstorm and just watch everything going on. Not me. I do, I do. <laughs> Good for well, you. Well, even on a windy day when the leaves are blowing, yeah. you know, when the, the, the amber colors and the yellow colors are just blowing through, yeah. that we see that power of a higher source. Yeah. You know, sure. that our, our earth has this energy that can just move things. And it can, again, clear away all of that thinking. And meditation is when we absent our mind of all the worry and the fears and the thoughts that keep streaming through. I think it's like 80% of our thoughts we run every day, the same ones. So if we can give that a little bit of a break and go somewhere where we feel serene and set ourselves up to just let it happen to us, then we relieve our stress. And it might take a while. I mean, I've known people that will actually go and sit by the river until they stop thinking. Oh. You know, it's like I know that there's stuff, and I will walk until I stop thinking. And then it's okay to turn around because my whole walk back is not processing and having conversations and being preoccupied with a problem and, you know, running the scenarios and that kind of thing. Sure. So, and then elementally, 
If you think about what heat does or, or what fire does, it can transform. It can clear out a whole forest. Yeah. But then we have the renewal of everything that comes up bright and beautiful. And sure. it starts all over again with regenerating, you know, the ecosystem and that kind of thing. Sure. And I think we do that with our self sometimes when we're reinventing it seems like every problem in the whole world happens all in a week yeah you know yes. like the people yeah. say that it happens in threes uh -huh. well how does it happen in threes well we think about the first two and then we bring our own the next one <laughs> it's like we find it we, we find yeah. we're looking for yeah, it, so yeah, we we're find it. Sure. Okay. right but but the image of fire is very powerful i mean you have bonfires in your backyard uh -huh. you know and i have a little fireplace in my condo and i like to watch a candle burn but there is nothing, for me, there is nothing more relieving when I can see what fire can just take away. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that it's just uh, the heat of that, the colors in that, mm -hmm. the energy. In, and I don't know if you've ever had a fire where you look, it's a bonfire outside and you've put too much on and it gets like you're almost afraid because it's so yes. burning, 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 those, burning. Yes. And then what happens is that it doesn't do any harm. That's the same thing that happens in us, is that we'll get so much fear and anxiety going on that it's burning, 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 and then it's nothing. Hmm. That's you know, they say if it's darkest before the dawn. Yes. I mean, I've had some really serious stuff, problems that have happened in my life, happened to me and my family, and I mean, life or death experiences, and it seems like right at the cusp of when that occurs, where I feel the you know complete tragedy, life shifts and then the light starts coming in and I can see more, I experience more, I have more perspective on my life and what I'm supposed to do with it. Sure. So I don't have to wait until the house burns down <laughs> yeah. to start making some changes now. Okay. So. Okay. And. Well, you talked about air and water and fire. And so we have the earth probably left. Yeah, the yeah, let's talk about that. We, we have such opportunity in our seasons to experience that in so many yeah. ways. The, I mean, right now we're, we're kind of in springtime where we can see the rain and it's you know, changing and shifting and mm -hmm. there's not a lot we want to do outdoors, yeah, right. Right? <laughs> right? But when we have the summer and we're outdoors and there's hiking and gardening and all the things that we do to go out there and get in touch with it, there, people like to go out hunting and just you know, rustle through the brush Sure. finding a way to, to just really be in it and part of it. And I think that's why a lot of folks like to do cross-country biking, because they are out there in the elements, good, bad, or indifferent, and sure. just experiencing, you know, different forms in the earth. Okay, you know, sure. I mean, look at the mountains uh -huh. and look at the ocean. You know, look at the trails in the, in the summertime when the trees are covering the streets, sure. the image of that. Yeah. And to be able to go somewhere where you can actually feel it, there's a path ahead of you, and you can go fast or you can just enjoy it as you go. Sure. So, and of course, gardening is a big one because there's many of us that like to grow things and just the process. Again, it's like human nature. We have a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Sure, we do. And we see that when we're producing crops, whether we're, you know, growing mm -hmm. corn or whether we're growing you know, tomatoes, it's we're producing something and we're assisting and facilitating in that co-creation with God. Sure. You know, we didn't have the seeds to begin with, but right. somehow we got the seeds and we put them in the ground and then they started manufacturing something wonderful for us to put into our bodies. Yeah. So to be able to watch that happen and to appreciate that happening. Absolutely. I mean, to stop and, you know, smell the roses. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And whatever else flower is out there as well, huh? Right. Okay. And I feel like there's, there's a couple of things that I do that are, you know, what I call like <clears throat> the, full, the full experience of it. And, and there's a couple of parks in, in the St. Croix Valley where if you sit, you're up on a bluff and you can see the whole, the whole value and the whole vast of the river coming through the city and kind of sit above all the nonsense of the city. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say the nonsense, but just the, the busyness. The busyness. Yeah. And you know, whatever is going on there, all you see is really the water and the trees and Wisconsin and, <laughs> you know, and what's around you might not even hear the children playing because you're so focused on that. And one of the things I experienced last summer was I was sitting for a, quite a while and 
um, I was up on a table on a, in a park looking over the water and it was like there were diamonds. You know, I had focused so long and so, you know, intently on that water that I could see like diamonds coming to the surface. Oh, beautiful. And metaphorically, I saw that diamonds coming into me. Oh, nice. So we can use nature as metaphor for our own personal growth. Sure. I mean, if you think about moseying down the river, it's going to be a little easier than going against the current. Yes. And if, how many things in your life have you felt like you're going against the current? Absolutely. It's like you can't find footing, the rocks are hard, it's slippery, you know, you see different ways that you can go either through the swamp or through the trees or, you know, somewhere that you've never been before and we anticipate. And when, do we, when we anticipate, is it, oh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next? Or <laughs> do we anticipate more of something that we experienced a long time ago? Yeah. Not even in our, I mean, in the last 28 years of my life, I have not experienced the same kind of violence and trauma in my life. But sometimes my brain will go, yeah, you're worthless. You can't do that. Exactly. You don't know how to do that. Yeah. So then if I think about metaphorically what is in my life right now that I can kind of focus that on, you know, what's difficult? Well, if you look at a cactus, there's a lot of sharp, sharp things, but if you open it up, what's in there? Good healing it might, stuff. It's healing stuff, yeah. and it might be something that's nutritional. It might sure. be something that's spiritual, or it just might be a cactus. So instead of focusing what's going to happen, it might not happen. Right. You know, it, it's really about what's in the here and now. And the meditation has a keen benefit of giving us a centered um, feeling where whatever we can do a bulletproof we can get ourselves through this because we're not alone we have God and that relationship that we talked about where you need to listen to me I need to listen to you and we have a very good rapport with each other but yet there's a sense of intimacy and there's a little intuition where I know what not to step on you know, and you know what not to sure. step on. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the relationship you grow with that higher source. And God doesn't care if you appreciate just your car or your house or your kids, but the creation of that. One of my practices for my clients is to have them write a gratitude list. And some of them have not done that ever in their life, and sometimes they have to call me every day and report it to me. Ten things, ten things, and just leave it on my voicemail. So they're saying it to themselves what they're grateful for. Sure. And that changes the vibration and energy in our bodies and our mind and our spirit to be more happy, just yeah. happy and appreciation. And so when we are focused on nature, it's telling God, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you've done, not thank you what I've done. Mm -hmm. Because that's not something that I, I can't I can't grow I can't grow a grass I can get the seed from the somewhere but I can't and human human beings no lab in the country has been able to start a blade of grass without something right they ha and where did that come from yeah so we have to figure out where it is that we can focus that attention really outside of ourselves long enough to be able to give the inside of ourselves a little relief. Because we got this problem at school, we got this problem with work, we got this problem with our car, we got this problem with our house, we got this problem with our spouse or a significant other or our sister or our brother. And we're looking at all those problems instead of internally taking time about what is the solution in me? How am I going to deal with those externals because I don't have to make them my problem? The yeah. solution is in me. And being away from life and going somewhere in nature long enough to release all of that gives us the benefit of letting us bring that in and have some internal relationship. A lot of people don't know they're talking to themselves. They don't know that they're thinking bad thoughts to themselves. Sure. So, you know, writing some of that down and saying, okay, what am I thinking about every single day? Okay. And there was, there was a point in my life where I was hypervigilant about a bad relationship I was in. So I wrote down everything I was thinking he was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking he was thinking, okay. That's right, sure. right. Yeah, okay. And then I went to him and I said, are you thinking these things? And he was looking at me like I lost my mind. <laughs> Maybe three of the things out of ten mm -hmm. that he actually thought, but they were def definitely not. I mean, we expect people to think what we're thinking, and that's not what happens. No, you're you right. Know? You're right. Yeah. yeah, good reality checks there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Cool. 
Well, we've talked a little bit about um, how you do this medica- meditation, I think. I mean, mm-hmm. how you've mm-hmm. kind of experienced it in different pieces that way. Mm-hmm. And a little bit about the benefits. Have we mm-hmm. not? Okay. All right. So how does somebody kind of learn how to take this step and do this? Hmm. I think people start with what they know. Okay. So if you have gone to church on Sunday as a little kid, you know that when you come in, you behave a certain way, and you wait to kind of be instructed on what to do next. Some people come in, and they genuflect, and they walk into church, and they sit down, and they focus on the little candle on the altar, and they can smell the scent in the air, frankincense. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's good reason to do that at home. When you come in the house, light a candle, burn some incense, cedar, sweet grass, sage, something that's going to awaken that energy in you. That olfactory is really powerful. Got it. But to kind of remind you, I mean, if I smell frankincense and I see a candle burning, I'm instantly in that state of knowing that I need to kind of just be quiet and sit there. Hmm. So we start with what we know. Now, I came from a family of hunters, so I was out in the woods a lot. And that's where my real entunement is. If I am out in the woods on a trail or not on a trail, I can sit down anywhere and just look at something and appreciate it and just you know go with that. And if there's practices that you want to learn how to do, there's courses through Community Ed or you can get with me and I'll help you learn how to get to where it is that you're going to find peace of mind. Um, I, as I talked about, I find serenity by the river. Mm-hmm. And um, St. Croix River Valley has this wonderful arts consortium called St. Croix Outreach, or Outreach St. Croix. Outreach, yeah, Saint Outreach St. Croix. And um, if you're an artist, they will help you develop what you like to do or where you go as an artist. Okay. And musically or literarily or um, performing-wise or if you're a portrait um, artist, you know, the actual visual arts, there's a way for you to develop some of that. I, um, I have a friend, uh, she's a student with me at the Meta Institute, okay. and uh, she is an artist and she's talked about how she will start painting at 9 o'clock at night and completely lose herself in the art. And she'll find herself at 2 o'clock in the morning with this wonderful image in front of her. But she's completely lost in her art. And that's a form of meditation. It even might be trans-like. Sure. So it's, it's lowering her heart rate to a point you know, where she's really in the moment with the thing that she's doing. Sure. And that's a key thing with meditation, is being really in the moment with what you're doing. Okay. Um, I, I volunteer with Saint, the Art Reach St. Croix okay. in here. And um, there was one day where there, Leslie, lovely Leslie, her model didn't show up for their portrait class. And they were using charcoal. And she asked me if I could sit. And I could watch the galleries at the same time and, and sit. So she put me up on a pedestal, which is weird, weird anyway. <laughs> and she asked me to sit quietly and just, you know, fixate on an object. And I said, well, how long is this going to take? And she said, well, maybe a couple hours. And my mother would have loved that, <laughs> to be able to find a way for me to sit down and be quiet for a couple <laughs> hours. So I found a place in a painting that it was a vivid, um, it had a lot of orange and red and black, and it was a very vivid um, abstract painting, and I just found a corner of it to fixate my eyes on. Hmm. And in the beginning, I just started looking at reproducing different images, like looking at, oh, that could be a dragon, you know, or that could be a bird. So I actually started imagining things in my mind's eye that I would see on that, that image. And as the, at the, as the time went on, I could hear Leslie in the background, you know, talking to her students about, oh, don't take the first line so sharp and look at the distance between her ear and her eye, you know, really giving instruction about, you know, the little crease in my chin. So there was all these little tiny things she was describing, and as she was doing that, I was still in that, you know, state. And I knew that I could do it if I just focused my breathing and meditating. Okay. And what I didn't know is that our bodies will move anyway. Even no matter how hard we're trying to stay still, they will move anyway. But it, it was very effective for me to know that I could stop myself for that long a period of time. And it didn't seem like any time went by at all. Interesting. I know it's like when you talk about gardening. 
Yes, when I do gardening, you're and right, you I'm lose gone. you lose track of time, <laughs> and do. you lose track of space. You lose yes. track of whatever it is, and you're really just internal. Yes, and absolutely. I think that's the key is to find that internal place okay. where we have no thinking about worries, Got and it. that gives our mind a break. Yes. It gives our spirit an opportunity to connect with a higher source so, so God can give us the information we need in order to answer his calling to us okay. about what we are here to do. And really just to develop as spiritual beings and heal the world. How tough is that? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll step yeah. back. Develop yeah. as a spiritual being. Okay, <laughs> <I can handle>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess if my intention is that, that no matter what I do, I am helping to heal the world. No matter what you do. Then, right? then we're doing good things that yeah. are helping to heal the world. And I guess yeah. that's pretty powerful. Okay, um, well, let's see. We talked about um, how we sort of get into that. So it doesn't really have to be a formal piece. It's just sort of um, getting caught up in and allowing yourself to be in the here and now maybe as you focus on something. Right. And, it, and if you're out in nature, then you're probably getting the added benefit of that extreme connection to mm -hmm. God or your higher somehow that way. Mm -hmm. um, anything more you want to add about how we might get started doing these things or um, any any stories that you have about people that you've noticed have used it? I, um, as you talked about the river, I'm kind of there too. I happen to be a river rat. Mm -hmm. I grew up on the Mississippi down in Lake City and then I went to college in Winona and so I stayed on the Mississippi and and I moved up to St. Paul, and I wasn't anywhere near close enough to water, even though the Mississippi is there. Mm -hmm. I wasn't close enough, so I said, we, we can't live there. Okay. We have to move. <laughs> i got to be by water. <laughs> i got to be by water. Yeah. So now we are on still water, so we're along the St. Croix. But I also found that we bought a house that has a pond mm -hmm. within eyesight out mm -hmm. the back door. Mm -hmm. And what I realize is when I get up in the morning and I look out my big picture window, I say, oh, yes, there's my water, and all's well with the world. Mm -hmm. because I have that strong connection to water, too, and mm -hmm. I can just sit and watch the waves move mm -hmm. on top of the water a little bit, and I'm mesmerized. And mm -hmm. I guess that mesmerization is that piece of mm -hmm. focus and meditation. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, well it, yeah. it offers us a chance to have an internal acceptance with everything all in that moment. It might shift after you leave the door. Uh -huh. But at that moment, you have total acceptance and forgiveness for everything. Mm -hmm. So, and those are higher principles. Those are, you know, I don't want to say higher than, uh, for me, they're for spiritual principles. Sure. You know, where we have acceptance and pr forgiveness and purpose and looking for, looking for something outside of us to fix our happiness. It's much easier easily it's more easily attained by going internally sure and I think that's what I find a lot with folks is they're trying really hard to find something to make them happy if they get the right partner if they get the right car if they get the right house get the right job if these things all line up perfectly then I will be happy sure. when really if we take time for ourselves and line up our bodies with being healthy and our spirits with being open and our mind with being clear of emotional problems mm -hmm. then that's when we are happy it comes from here it's not everything lining up because I've had everything lined up and still was miserable sure <laughs> no, yes. because yeah. I wasn't happy with me I hadn't yeah. been healed of the things that had happened to me or or I was just dissatisfied or I was angry at someone and couldn't forgive them sure. you know or I was in a situation where I couldn't accept accept them sure. but what I what I suggest is you know find out what's working you know if, and do more of it you know, if mm -hmm. there's something else, if it's if there's something that's missing and you need to do some more research, there's a lot of suggestions, you know, taking classes or, you know, getting audio tapes where you can listen to nature, or where you can listen to a guided meditation where it tells you what adventure you're on or, you know, helps you just, you know, re okay. relax, sure. those kind of things. So. And, and I think you might have one that you're going to guide us through. I have here? a little, I have a little Good, thing. because I think that's probably as much time as we have here. Okay. okay. So, Joni, take a moment. Okay. 
Look at you already know the breathing. Oh, it right. just comes. <laughs> right. I don't know if I know it, right. but instinctively it comes. So I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions, and I'm going to have you think about these as you slow your breathing very slow. In silence, my heart and mind are centered in God. I have faith in the infinite wisdom and guidance. Through divine healing, I am whole. I am prospered as I circulate all that is good. I enfold myself and all beings in peace. The energy of God revitalizes me. I live in abundance. My inner peace contributes to the peaceful world. I'm calm. Joni, you can come back to the room and right. come in. No, I don't want to. <laughs> All right. That's beautiful. Yeah, right. That's beautiful. And um, those inspirational statements certainly are guiding them. Feel wonderful. Good. Thank you so much, Anita. Thanks for visiting today, putting uh, this out there for everybody to understand a little bit more about what meditation is. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. That's the end of our program today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I know you've probably picked up on a few things you didn't know about before, and maybe you'll use a few of them. We hope you will. We have more shows coming, so please stay tuned. Um, we're sure that you'll See a few things you already know about, but maybe many that you don't know about. And we'd love to have you learn more. So stay tuned. You're welcome to take a look at us on YouTube as well. Um, just go to YouTube and then River Valley Holistics channel, and you can check out some of the other shows that we've put together as well. So stay tuned to Cable. We'll see you again. Thanks for joining us.